Please welcome our friend and a friend of the steelworkers, a very impressive leader of the British Columbia New Democrats, John Horgan. Bruce Springsteen. All right. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Brother Hunt, for that introduction. And, and President uh, Gerard, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be here this week and uh, make friends with 2,500 new people. I really appreciate that. It's an honor to be here with working people as a, a representative of the BC New Democratic Party. And I think they're going to put an image up behind me. There it is. That's my workplace. I'm able to work there in the legislature of British Columbia because of the work and support of steel workers, and particularly in District 3. And I want to make sure that I give a shout out to Prince George, to Williams Lake, and the, all of the locals in British Columbia who have been so strongly supportive of the BC NDP for as long as I've been participating in politics. Now, this isn't my first workplace. As, uh, as Steve said, I've worked uh, in the forest sector and unionized pulp mills. I've worked in the service sector and unionized uh, workshops. And it's on the shop floor that I learned the values that, that help guide me into political life and, 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 in fact, have been the foundation of the BC NDP. The United Steel Workers are a partner, a foundational partner in the constitution of the NDP in Canada and in British Columbia. And as Brother Newman said yesterday, the NDP has no better friend than the steel worker, and the steel workers have no better friend than the NDP. And it's your support, your, your, your encouragement, whether it be the, uh, the humor of, of Brother Newman, uh, the perseverance uh, of, of Brother Hunt, and, and the, the leadership of, of Carol Landry and, and Leo that have made the steel workers and the NDP inseparable in British Columbia and, in fact, right across Canada. And I want to thank the leadership and all the members here today for that support over the years. I also want to say that uh, it's not just talking the talk uh, in British Columbia. We have four steel workers in our BC NDP caucus. One of them is joining us here today. Brother Harry Baines is our forestry spokesperson. And I don't think I need to tell you, uh, having four steel workers in the caucus, things get a little bit rough every now and again. And uh, we don't have a, a swear jar, Leo, but we could probably fund the next campaign on some of the language that comes out of our steel workers. And that's a good thing. And it's not just steel workers that are in the NDP caucus. We have healthcare workers. We have teachers. We have transit operators. We have farm workers. The foundation of the BC NDP and the NDP across Canada was built by working people, and that partnership remains strong today. And when I speak of steel workers, we've had some dark days in the BC NDP. In 2001, we were reduced to two seats in our legislature and thrown out of the halls of power. It was tough to find friends in those days, but we always had friends in the steel workers. They never turned our backs on us. They were always there when we need them, and I'm proud to say they're still there today. I also uh, want to say a, a couple of things about some challenges we had with respect to our leadership uh, following the 2009 election. And I guess I'm speaking directly to District 3 members, and I apologize to the brothers and sisters who don't understand British Columbia politics. It's, uh, it's an odd and, and exciting place. When we talk about having uh, workers' rights stripped, in British Columbia, it's real. It's real. In 2002, the government, the current government, not only stripped rights, they ripped up collective agreements that were signed by the healthcare sector and by teachers in British Columbia. The Supreme Court of British Columbia has found in both cases, twice in the case of teachers, that they violated the Constitution of Canada and the Bill of Rights, and yet they still sit in power today in British Columbia, and that's plain wrong. What you gain at the bargaining table, you can indeed lose at the ballot box. And that's why it's so important that steel workers and organized labor right across this continent stick together and support progressive candidates wherever and whenever you can. At the local level, at the state level here in, in the United States, and in, at the provincial level 
in Canada, the national level, in both of our capitals. We need to elect people like Nancy Pelosi and people like Tom Mulcair so that we can bring progressive politics to our legislatures, so that the work that you're doing on the shop floor, at the bargaining table, are not taken away by extremists and right-wing politicians who don't care a whit about you and your family. They only care about their interests and the interests of the special, the special few at the top of the ladder. The one percenters have had more than enough to eat, thank you very much. It's time for the rest of us to get to the buffet, and we can only do it if we stick together. I've been listening to the debates over the past couple of days, and it's a, just a great reminder of why steelworkers and new Democrats are partners in Canada. I heard uh, uh, President Girard talking about raw log exports, and that's a real, real issue in British Columbia. In BC, 95% of our forests are owned by the people of British Columbia. They're a collective wealth. They're a bounty for this generation and future generations. And since the BC Liberals don't mix them up with Liberals of the American variety, they are Conservatives, they are Neoconservatives, they are right-wing, as right as right can get. Since 2002, they've taken away policies that were in place for generations that ensured that if you cut a tree down in British Columbia, there had to be jobs attached to it in the community closest to where that tree fell. It was called a pertinency, and the BC Liberals took it away, and now we see truck after truck after truck of raw logs driving past shuttered mills on their way to Tidewater and export and manufacturing in China and other parts of Asia. That's wrong. We need to change that. And with Brother Baines as my forest spokesperson, we're going to give him hell for the next three years and form the next government of British Columbia and stop raw log exports once and for all. I, I want to I, I say again, I, I, uh, some of my colleagues uh, from British Columbia were saying, Horgan, you, were just, you couldn't stop smiling when, uh, when Brother Barber was uh, at the podium yesterday. And who didn't? Who didn't? I was just grateful that Leo said, Horgan, you're up next. You know, I, I think that uh, there's only one person that has to follow the orders, and he's sitting to my, to my left. But the message, the message that the Reverend left us yesterday will be with me for a long, long time. We need to unite to stop the extremism, to stop the extremism here in the United States and to stop the growing extremism in my home of Canada. The only way, the only way we do this, brothers and sisters, is following your lead. Following our lead of, of the uh, Resolution 13 yesterday, political action is not just something you do on weekends. It's something you have to do every day. We are against forces that are far more balanced, are far more uh, resourced than we are. We have hope on our side. We have the hopes of the people that come after us on our side, and we cannot let down. If not us, who? If not now, when, brothers and sisters? We cannot let them win. I want to talk uh, a little bit about some of the, the resolutions and some of the, the comments that I heard uh, on the floor uh, yesterday, particularly. Uh, it was a great day for me. It, 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 when, when you're involved in, in politics and you just you end up looking at the opposition all the time and you're not with your brothers and sisters as much as you can be, and to be in a room full, full of support for your values, it's a wonderful thing. We all know that issues divide us. We heard from the last speaker, we can divide on issues, but we are always united on our values. We are always coming from the same place. We may diverge on, on whether it be wind power or bioenergy, whatever the issue is, we can disagree because at the end of the day, we know that our values are rock solid. They're mainstream values, they're not marginal values. They're the values that made this continent what it is today, and we stick together, we do what we can to bring more people to our banner, more people voting for progressive politicians. We will not fail. I want to just leave you with one other story that fits quite nicely with the, uh, the resolution that was just debated. Uh, my brothers and sisters in local 425 uh, from a, an area of British Columbia called the Caribou. We don't have as many, yeah, right on. We don't, have as many, uh, we don't have as many members here for the convention as we would have because last week a tailing pond at Imperial Metals Mine at Mount Pauly failed. Uh, Brother Hunt has quite rightly advised me that the media likes to say it was a breach, a breach. 
When you have 350 meters, I can't translate that to you, I'm afraid. I've been, I grew up in the metric system. A big space, a few football fields whole, and you see 10 million cubic meters of toxic tailings rushing out and despoiling a lake and then going into a creek that used to be as wide as this podium and is now as wide as this auditorium, you've got an environmental disaster on your hands of epic proportions. And the brothers and sisters in Local 425 back in the Caribou are trying their very, very best to make sense out of the madness, and they're not all with us here today. And I want to just give a shout out to those who have come. We're still with you, brothers and sisters. We will fight with you to ensure your jobs are protected, to ensure that the cleanup work, when it happens, is not farmed out to low-cost contractors, but will go to USW workers in the Caribou and right across British Columbia. Now, how is it, how is it that you can have 10 million, 10 million metric liters of toxic tailings come rushing out of a dam when you put the foxes in charge of the hen house? Deregulation is the culprit here. Workers didn't fail that dam. Engineers didn't fail that dam. Deregulation failed that dam, and a government that wouldn't even enforce their minimal standards, that just let it pass, just keep letting it pass, has led to a catastrophic failure in one of the most pristine parts of my home of British Columbia. If you ever get the opportunity, brothers and sisters, please come to BC, go to the Caribou, spend some money, because goodness knows we need it up there, and you will be in for a treat, except for where they're going to be treating the soil for the next generation. 10 million cubic meters of poison rushed out of a tailing pond and is now sitting waiting for 10 million sockeye salmon to come and complete their life cycle as they spawn in the Quinell Lake just below the tailing pond failure. And that, brothers and sisters, is what you get with deregulation and right-wing governments that focus more on their pockets and less on the people. If we are going to have a sustainable economy, as everyone in Canada knows and all steel workers knows, you cannot separate the environment and the economy. They are the same thing. And the economy does not work for corporations. It's supposed to work for people. And that's why I'm proud to stand on this stage with steel workers and say to all of you, we will be at your side wherever the fight is, whenever the fight is. We can count on you. You can count on us. As Brother Newman said, friends for life. Pinky swear on that one. Let's go. Let's give it up. Friends for life. You know, talk about the trickle-down effect, eh, Leo? 10 million cubic meters of tailing pond coming down on top of you. That's trickle-down. That's what you get from deregulation. It's wrong. It's always been wrong. And the way to defeat that is to elect progressives right across this continent. And I know with the help of steel workers, we're going to be able to do that. It's the greed that gets us, isn't it? Wherever you go, wherever you go on this continent, you can see it in their eyes. It's not just the little mustaches and the top hats anymore. Everybody's out to make a buck. What happened to collective decision making? What happened to the founding principles of this great country and my great country to the north of here? Working together cooperatively for the common good. The Reverend hit so many home runs yesterday, it's hard to count. I think Henry Aaron's going to be looking to be number two after that impressive at bat yesterday. But we have to keep in mind every single day as we leave this convention, we go back to our communities, that if we don't hang together, we're going to fail together. And the Reverend's call, the Reverend's call to fight extremism with compassion and with hope has to resonate in every community represented in this room today. And I know, brothers and sisters, when you leave here, it will. I want to conclude. I want to conclude by by again thanking uh, Leo and, and uh, Steve for for inviting me here today and for allowing me to to bump up my spot on the agenda. I have to get back to British Columbia tomorrow, and I'm not able to stay to the conclusion of the convention. But it gives me real hope, and, and I know that when politicians come and speak to people, they usually talk about all oh, this and that and the other thing. But I want you all to know that. As powerful as the Reverend was yesterday, and I, uh, I was enthralled by his presentation, it was listening to you, the union, listening to your commitments, listening to your purpose that gives me hope for the future and gets me up every morning 
to go and do the things that you do, to work hard for social change, to make sure that you protect what you have and give better to your families and the children that come after us. That's what the steel workers have always done. That's what the NDP tries to do. And with you fortifying me, with you giving me the sustain, the sustain, the, 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 the ah, shit. <laughs> I'll conclude by saying steel workers don't sit back and let shit happen. They don't agonize, they organize. I'm proud to support a union that works. Thank you very much. Keep up the fight. I'll see you again in a few years as the Premier of British Columbia. Thank you very much.